it is so great to see you. Thank and you. so great that you're doing so well. And by the way, you have such an interesting life, and we'll get to that in a moment. But first, tell us about this whole relationship on The Big Bang Theory with, with uh, Sheldon and Amy, or Shamey. Shamey, Did yes. you ever imagine that you would become like the, the modern day Ross and Rachel? No, I mean, it's such an unusual character, obviously, right. the Sheldon character. And um, when I was brought on, it was the season finale of season three. And a lot of people kind of weren't sure if they wanted Sheldon to have a love interest or kind of a female version of him. Um, but our writers, I think, have done a beautiful job really letting it evolve so that he kind of stays himself. We've done very slow changes sort of to the relationship. Um, it means a lot to me and Jim. We're very close. and. Uh, this relationship is very important to us, both on camera and off camera. So we really, we, we care for it very tenderly. Oh, that's nice. And he is so talented and he's such a talented. terrific guy, isn't he? And he's isn't very, he? very humble. Um, he's an incredibly thoughtful and intelligent person. He's not like Sheldon. People always ask him <laughs> Yeah, that. they do. Um, but he's, he's very bright and um, he's got a wicked sense of humor. And we just have a great time, all of us, on our set. Now, I first came to know you, Mime, when, during, uh, when you were in Beaches, mm -hmm. when you played the younger version of Bette Midler, right. and of course, the ultimate tearjerker <laughs> movie. If I ever need a good cry, I just <laughs> Well, look beaches. at me, that's yeah. right. <laughs> and, and, uh, no, no, I don't mean that. No, it's Barbara Hershey in the hand. <laughs> I mean, you were how old when you uh, made I was, that movie? I was 12, and it came out when I was 13. Wow. And, and what was it like as a 12-year-old working with Bette Midler and, and Barbara Hershey, too? Right. Um, I had only seen a handful of Bette Midler movies. A lot of her movies were R-rated. I wasn't allowed to see R-rated movies. Yeah. It was awesome to work with her, and she was very quiet and sweet. But it was more like my parents who were freaking out that I was in a movie with Bette Midler. I didn't really get it. I was... Just like a, you know, I was a kid. Well, as we said, you were 12 when you did that, then 14 when you did Blossom. Mm -hmm. And so you had a lot of success at a very young age. So how did you avoid the pitfalls that we often see child actors fall into? Um, you know, I, I don't know that there's one solution. You know, I'm a second generation American. My parents are very strict, but I don't know that that's the answer. For me, I think it was. Um, they, my well, parents, I think it's part of the answer. Well, surely. and I think my parents always wanted me to still have other interests, to still, you know, be very diligent about schoolwork and chores. They tried to keep my life as normal as possible, and, and I'm very grateful for that. And I think they didn't put all their eggs in the acting basket. Absolutely and neither not. did you, Maya, because you went on to get a PhD in neuroscience. Correct. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> I mean. That, I mean, how did that happen? Um, I fell in love with science in high school. I had a tutor uh, during my Blossom years. She was a dental student at UCLA at the time. She's now a dental surgeon, and she was the one who gave me the, the confidence and the skill set. I always thought science was for boys. I wasn't a naturally good science student. Um, but I, I really, I mean, I wanted to go to college. My grandparents were immigrants. Like, you go to college, that's what you do. So when Blossom ended, I did um, five years undergraduate at UCLA in neuroscience and Hebrew and Jewish studies, and I went on to a PhD in neuroscience. I had two kids while I was away out of the public eye. I had like a, you know, relatively normal, crazy grown-up life. <laughs> and, and, and by the way, you play a neurobiologist mm -hmm. on Big Bang, which must come in handy. Your neuroscience <laughs> background. Do you ever well, say to the writers, uh, that's not exactly no, right. Those you don't talk to properties. Right, you don't talk to Chuck Lorre like no, that. No, you don't. No, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. no, actually, when I first came on, we didn't know what, what profession the character had. It was when they brought me back in season four that Bill Prady said, ah, we'll just make her a neurobiologist. So. Meanwhile, you're, you're very involved in STEM, science, uh, technology, engineering, and math. Correct. Trying to get girls especially right. to, to really pursue these fields. Right. This is my second year in a row that I've partnered with DeVry University, and we do... Um, there's a National Her World Month, and we do a lot of kind of initiatives to get high school girls interested, not only in like, you should study STEM because it's good for the economy and there are so many jobs open, but to give them a notion of mentorship, to show them actual women who have these jobs. Something you wish you had had. Exactly, and for a lot of young girls, if it's not in our culture and in our media and in our educational system, we need to see what does a woman look like who has gone this path? Is her life flexible? Does she have kids? How did she get there? And I think that's really what I try and do in my work with DeVry University. Well, in addition to being, being a neuroscientist, an actor, and a, a, a mentor to a lot of girls. Thank you. Um, you are also a vegan. I am. That's and another <laughs> profession. <I guess. laughs> 